Okay, this is crazy. A.J. Brown this offseason got bigger, stronger, faster, and he can jump higher. We also talk about one of the youngest players on the Eagles defense making noise in his position group. Plus, Brian Dawkins has some high praise for C.J. Garner-Johnson, who's already back in the lab with OTAs just ending. So C.J. is one of those guys that if you surround him with the right, you know, individuals, like that can be an absolutely dyna dynamic group under Vic Fangio. Oh, he said more. But first, remember when Micah Parsons said the Eagles won't pay AJ in two years? They did in one. I'm loving every bit of this. AJ, they can't they ain't gonna be able to pay you he in two years. He does not. <laughs> you, he, he needs some tissue. He needs some tissue. He, he, he really... The show is over. He's ready to for, go home. And for the cry. money you need, he does they're not, not gonna he be able to not know. You. Yo, see, he's trying to take shots at your pocket, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool, AJ. <laughs> you know what? He he's got paid. Play he's paid. He got two years left. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today, as always, we got our birds to talk about. But before we get into it, help your boy out. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. So real quick, man, I absolutely love having Jeff Stoutland as the O-line coach. We all know he's the best one in the NFL. But Thomas R. Peterson killed it with this tweet. The Jets spent years of conflict with Makai Becton about moving him from left to right tackle. Jeff Stoutland spends a week with him, and he's playing left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. You got to love and respect the dynamic brought to the Eagles team when we talk about Coach Jeff Stoutland. That being said, we talked about what's going on with Hassan Reddick in the Jets' last video. Somebody commented on it saying, I don't just look at it as we got a third-round pick from the Jets. He looks at it like we got a third-round pick, Bryce Huff, and Makai Becton. And if you look at it that way, which I don't know if you can, but if you do, sheesh. Moving on to A.J. Brown, who said it himself, he's in the best shape of his life. ESPN Tim McManus wrote, his trainer said, he did a really good job this year of honing into the nutritional side of it. His dietitian did a great job with him, and he really bought into it. We saw a huge drop in his body fat percentage. We saw like 2% drop in just a few weeks because he was so dialed in nutritionally. He was so disciplined on the weekends. A running joke is he stays away from the cakes and chips. Those are like his vices. Hey, man, we know A.J. Brown goes over the top in the weight room and working on his craft, but now he's looking at the dietitianary side of it, and it's going to pay off. We saw this picture of A.J. Brown in the offseason right before he said he was in the best shape of his life. Coach Joey G said A.J. Brown's vertical jump reached 28.5 inches during training this offseason, two inches higher than what he recorded at his scouted combine back in 2019, even though he's five years older and weighs more than he did coming out of Ole Miss. So A.J. Brown is weighing about 225 and jumping two inches higher five years later. Plus, his speed was a knock coming out of college. That's why he was a second-round pick. He's up to 22 miles per hour. Don't just take my word for it. Joseph G. tweeted this offseason saying, Friendly reminder that 1K always open is not human. A smooth 22 miles per hour today. Again, that's looking that jack being 225. I keep saying all this because, again, it's not human. A.J. Brown set a franchise record with 106 catches last season. He became the first player in NFL history to post six consecutive games of 125-plus receiving yards, breaking a mark previously held by first ballot Hall of Famer Calvin Johnson. A.J. Brown made his third Pro Bowl and was named second-team All-Pro. That's with his stats falling off the end of regular season because he got hurt. Plus, the Eagles were a hot mess going one and five in the last six. A.J. Brown, who got better every year in Tennessee and every year in Philadelphia, is coming into this season looking to eclipse 1,500 yards. And with his track record and determination and Kellen Moore's system, I wouldn't put it past him. Again, you got Smitty who needs the rock, Dallas Scotter. And we can't forget one of the best running backs in the NFL and Saquon Barkley, 
So the dynamic is going to be different. But 1K always open. The number one wide receiver against single coverage, which I think he'll be facing a lot in 2024, is going to eat. Plus, if there's any indication who one of the top dogs is on the Eagles offense, it's A.J. Brown. Just looking at OTAs, he was the most target player. It should be really interesting as training camp comes along and Jalen Hurts and Saquon and Devontae and A.J. and Dallas Goddard become more comfortable in Kellen Moore's system. Moving on to one of the youngest players on the Eagles roster, you could say he was the best corner in OTA minicamps. Keely Ringo had some high praise from A.J. Brown. Word on a bird has A.J. Brown's quote, Keely is difficult at times going against him. I go against him a lot. He's definitely growing. You can see a different step with him. He's hungry, and he's competing at a high level. That's what A.J. Brown said this offseason. I don't got the exact quote, but I remember as Keeley started to play more and get more reps on defense and practice, A.J. Brown went out his way to say, man, once this kid puts it together, he going to be an all pro. He got scary physical tools. Again, his size, speed, and physicality you don't normally see in your average corner. Going back to what I previously said, one of the youngest players, do you know that he is younger than Quinya Mitchell? 22, Keely Ringo, only 21. So Keely Ringo is going into year two, tied with three other Eagles for the youngest player on the Eagles roster. The other three players are Will Shipley, who's 21, Cooper DeGene, who's 21, and Jeremiah Trotter Jr., who's only 21. And if the linebacker group starts slipping, we might be asking a lot from Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Going to try to get some information on him real soon because... If we don't add any linebackers and the Kobe Dean can't stay healthy, which we'll talk about more in this offseason, Jeremiah Trotter might be forced in some early reps at the age of 21. But he's going to have to make that name proud. Back to Keely Ringo. As a rookie, he appeared in 17 games but only started four of them, accumulating 21 tackles, two passes defended, an interception, a fumble recovery, and a sack. Low-key forgot about the sack, but it wasn't until week 13 against the Dallas that he factored into the defensive equation. When he was asked about the offseason and how he feels going into year two, he said he has a little bit more patience. Ringo admitted, I'm processing the game. When the ball's hiked, I'm not having to think as much as I used to, which is important for a young player. Trust your technique. Trust your instincts. Play fast. You shouldn't be thinking. You should be believing in your God-gifted ability. And again, the things you prepared all week. As we came out of OTA and minicamp, the two big names at the corner position for number one during camp were either Keely Ringo or Isaiah Rogers, which we spoke about Isaiah Rogers a lot and a fantastic job he did coming back to football. Again, both these guys are making it hard on the James Bradbury's, Cooper DeGene's, Quinya Mitchell, Eli Ricks, Zach McPherson, Avante Maddox, and the long, long list of corners that we have on this team. Again, the most fierce position battle coming up in the end of July is the cornerback position. I'm going to be interested in right guard. I'm going to be interested in running back two. I'm going to be interested in the safety rotation, right? Behind C.J. Garner-Johnson, who's a lock, who been putting work in. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But who's behind him? Reed, Cindy Brown, who else? Will James Bradbury get a legit chance to play safety or be a safety? I don't know. Who are the linebackers behind Devin White? We know Zach Bond, N'Kobe Dean, and Jeremiah Trotter Jr. But other than Devin White, or will prove themselves to be good enough. Still a lot of questions, but none still bigger than that corner position. It's about to be crazy. Now let's talk a little bit about C.J. Garner-Johnson. His trainer posted on Twitter a video of him working out just yesterday. The other DB is Christian Fulton, who plays for the Chargers. But C.J. Garner-Johnson, every opportunity, working on his craft, trying to make sure that when he steps on the field in Philadelphia, he's back to 2022. Again, there was a little report 
that Cooper DeGene went up for a one-hand interception, and he should have brought it in. He didn't bring it in, and C.J. Garner-Johnson gave him a little trash talk, got on his back, which is good. It's tough love. Philly, tough love. The fans are going to do it, so why not his teammates? Cooper DeJean is tough enough to handle it. And after practice that day, he tweeted this. I ain't come back to be like. I came back to set the tone and win. And he purposely said that because he heard about the report that he talked a little trash to Cooper DeJean, which is all good in the city of brotherly love. I played this clip a few days ago of Brian Dawkins giving high praise to Vic Fangio. But in it, he also talks about C.J. Garner-Johnson. So two of the people Dawkins is looking at helping change this Eagles defense is the versatility of Fangio, but how good and what a chess piece C.J. Garner-Johnson is. We talk about the versatility of Cooper DeGene, right? C.J. Garner-Johnson can play safety at a high level, can play the slot. He can play anywhere on the field as well. Remember that. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I love his versatility. That's that's what I've always said about him. Like, I love his versatility. I love his mean streak, absolutely, but I love his versatility. But now on that defensive side of the ball, if you look at the draft, they have a whole bunch of guys, in my opinion, that I call chess pieces, that they can move around the field and they can do a lot of different things. In today's NFL, you need versatile guys. You need you don't you, you can't just have guys that can do peg to do one thing. They have they can be they have to be multiple to, to be able to do a lot, a lot of different things because offenses throw so much on the field. So CJ is one of those guys that if you surround him with the right you know individuals like that can be an absolutely dyna dynamic group under Vic Fangio I believe this is going to be a much improved defense much improved with all that being said I go by Philly Mike and this is the Philly Talk podcast we will be doing our way too early 53 man roster prediction very soon we'll have some comparison videos this would be beautiful as Madden 25 cover it's CMC but this would be beautiful. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in this video. Hit the like button for your boy. Subscribe to the channel and turn that bell on because we will have a lot more live stream, comparison videos, predictions, and more. Until next time, you know what time it is. Muscle up. We out.